And I'm Ryan Thompson. I'm the Senior Vice President at Miles Partnership. I'm also founder and uh, head of our studio unit, uh, Odyssey, which produces uh, content of many forms. Um, at Odyssey, we talk about you know, crafting stories that connect your brand to travelers. And so many of the things we're doing there run the gamut of different forms of content from <clears throat> short form narrative content um, <clears throat> to episodic content, to films and series and to written words as well. And so uh, much of what we do is focused around not only crafting of that content, but where it gets distributed, how it gets seen, how it gets promoted and presenting it through platforms in the best way possible. And so today I wanna share in the course of 15 minutes with you sort of one big idea. Um, and the big idea that we talk a lot about at Odyssey in our studios unit is the fact that you are not the hero of your story. Um, we generally draw, when we hear storytelling in the advertising world, um, we think it's really different from what really the rest of the world, the filmmaking world, the literature world, the fine arts world would, would consider storytelling. Um, and real storytelling draws on the approaches of these different crafts. I mean, it has things, we've all heard about it. We've, we've heard about plot archetypes, we've heard about story arts, we've heard about having conflict to have resolution with characters. That's what storytelling is really about. I mean, something that will endear your consumer um, to your brand because you're telling a great story first. And again, you're not the hero of your story. Your consumer has to be. And so here are the steps that I would give you on how to tell a great story and how to do it in a, you know, in a travel and tourism environment. The first is to think entertainment first, brand second. Um, so when we when I get into in a, in a couple of minutes, the approaches of literature and storytelling, we're gonna talk about things like the mentor and the guide. That's your role, that's the brand's role, not to be the hero. Entertainment first, brand second. Sounds like a great idea, but it can be a little scary. We're literally saying you have to focus on telling an, entertainment, an entertaining story first and then figure out how your brand fits in second. We're not saying the brand doesn't fit in. We're saying it's not the first objective. It's not how to make it about us. It's how to tell a great story and allow us to provide a landscape where we provided the story and perhaps we are a character in that story. So <clears throat> if you come from the literature, fine arts, filmmaking world, you probably have heard about the hero's journey. But if you come from an advertising and marketing world, maybe you haven't. Hero's Journey was created by Joseph Campbell, later adapted by Christopher Vogel, and it literally follows a 12-step process. And what I'll say is you can apply this um, methodology to almost any story that's been told for over 2,000 years. Um, so let's take one, for example. I continue to, to, to love Star Wars and things like The Mandalorian all the way back to the original New Hope. Uh, Luke starts in his ordinary world. He receives this call to adventure to go experience this new and different thing, but he's a little reluctant to do it. But on that journey, he meets Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, he crosses this threshold into something entirely new, a special unknown world. He faces all kinds of tests and challenges, um, and he begins to sort of rebirth himself or experience something new about himself through that ordeal. And that and the, you know, the win is sort of his reward. And then he goes back and experiences, you know, we call it return with the elixir. He experiences this grand moment where enlightenment has happened. We could take that and apply it to the novels you like, the TV shows you watch, and the films that you go to the theater for, and it really works. From that, you can do things like take plot archetypes. And uh, while I won't get into many of them today, what I'll tell you is there are seven basic plot archetypes. One of them is called overcoming the monster. And so when I talk about these a lot, you may say, well, that's great. But in a travel and tourism environment, how, how are we going to cast a monster in our story? We don't have to take it so literally. In fact, the picture I'm showing you is a series that we shot in Florida earlier this year called Life's Rewards. And it, it did, essentially, it is an overcoming the monster story. Um, it's about a guy who was in his safe, comfortable, peaceful, and calm world doing his thing. Suddenly, big conflict happens, and he goes into um, a little bit of a despair role um, and then begins to evolve as he travels far, 
figuratively in this sense, as he is evolving himself and he resolves that complex and goes to a happy, happy ending. You'll see on screen on screen that I use Jaws as an example of that too, the movie. So you don't have to take them so literally, but there are basic archetypes of how to tell great stories. And there's about, there's about seven of those. And so think entertainment first, store uh, brand second. The second step I want to give you is to build for distribution. Um, where and how will you tell your story? What format, length, and environment should it be prepared for? Um, and when we talk about distribution, I intentionally don't call it paid media because paid media may be used to promote your story, but it may not, and it doesn't necessarily have to be. Generally, in the distribution universe today, when we're looking at a streaming environment, we're looking at three types of different uh, di distribution, AVOD, SVOD, and TVOD. AVOD is ad um, supported video on demand. And so that's YouTube, it's Facebook Watch. It's also networks like Pluto and Tubi where you can go get them on your TV today. They're completely free, but you have no other option but to watch ads. You're okay with it because it doesn't cost you anything. SVOD is subscription video on demand. Um, and so as you would imagine, Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV Plus, as well as Prime Video fit in that category. But then you've got transactional video on demand, which Prime Video actually crosses into. If you're a Prime member, you may have noticed that if you're ever logged out, you have the option to buy an episode or it's free to Prime members. And so they're filling both that SVOD and TVOD environment um, there's a lot of transactional video on demand players out there, iTunes, Google Play, or a couple of other ones. And so when we talk about building for distribution, you should imagine where your story is going to be told. You should imagine what environment is right for it. We're uh, filming a show right now called Park to Park, which is an outdoor series, and we partnered with Outside TV uh, to get it into a broadcast schedule because it was the right place to tell that kind of story, maybe not necessarily the right place to tell another kind of story. Step three is to imagine promotion. So even when you get them there, um, how will you, uh, I should say, even when you tell your story and get on an environment like Prime, you still have to promote it. And how are people gonna find the story when they're looking for it? So this is a snapshot of something we call the story system at Odyssey. And if you look right down this middle column, it's gonna follow that hero's journey pretty well, which is who are your characters? What challenge do they face? The mentor guide role, and so on and so forth. If you look to the left, uh, we're looking at things that feel very much like brand strategy exercises, which they are. Uh, the story DNA, who are you? What is your product? Where does it fit in the travel life cycle? And where does it solve an audience desire? But when we think about promotion, uh, let's look at the circle on the right of your screen, which we call the story space. I mean, obviously in a streaming environment, we may be pushing out our story into something like Prime Video, so a digital environment, but are there opportunities to create physical activations? Are there experiential opportunities where you could tie in music series to perhaps a music festival? And more so, um, are we able to create content that then creates conversations? And so if it's an interesting story, if it's a first of its kind, if you've got interesting characters in it, all of those people can be creating content for you, which then creates conversations. Um, and doing it that way creates a pretty big organic inbound environment for your story. And you can supplement that with paid media as well, but all of that sort of fits into what we call this story space environment, where hopefully it lives on from just your first day of launch and people continue to talk and tell the story and encourage others to watch it through ratings and reviews and just commenting on social media. Step four is to acquire partners. Um, we talk about travel adjacent partners all the time who can expand your reach and, and by including them in your story. And so call it product placement or call it brand integrations. Uh, these are opportunities for partnership. Um, I'll give you an example of Ford Bronco with the Park to Park series I just mentioned. Uh, we created a brand uh, integration opportunity for Park to Park where it's much more than just a product placement. Product placement is when you see that Coke can in the TV show, but it, it, it really was just a prop. In the case of Ford Bronco and Park to Park, we actually made the Bronco a central part of the story. It's the way people get from one place to the next. And so it's, it's an integrated brand. 
That was valuable to Ford because they feel like our travel audience fits with their Bronco demographic really well. Um, and they're going to help promote the story. In other cases, um, we might use Canon equipment on screen to tell our stories. We might be using MasterCard to transact commerce or, of course, brands like REI and Yeti. And so by finding partners, these partners may either invest in your series or they may provide in-kind promotion in your series through free gear or through promotion on their own network. So not only are they able to then re receive sort of a, a travel adjacent audience, but you're able to get exposure to their audience as well. But again, as we sort of close out and we open some time for questions, it's all about the story first. Entertainment first, brand second. You don't want to tell a story that's entertaining that doesn't have a role for your brand. But, but if you do find a way to create entertainment content and the brand fits in well, then you've got something that I think people find really compelling.